Hey guys, all you people out there in Cyberland, I want to go ahead and do a chat today because I'm putting those houses out there as part of a chance to let everybody know that some of the houses do come available again. We're trying to go for a little walk here and take you with me, and it won't take a whole long time, but perhaps a few people will join us, perhaps. Facebook's not real good about letting everybody know. Look at that. We got some chickens up there ahead of us. Rocky's gonna go up there and scare him. Have you guys been around? I'm getting ready to tear the whole front of the building. Or I did tear the front of the building off. And I got a big plan to put a whole new front on it. It's gonna be called the uh, Salvation Chapel. And it's all because we're gonna go ahead and show everybody how you can find a way to salvage your past, salvage your past and create something out of it. I don't have a mic on, so I need to hold this up close, I suppose, so you can hear me over that traffic for the moment. So the opportunity is there to get into the arched Zebu, one of my houses I created years ago, or Vicky Zebu, another great house I created years ago, about a decade, a little over. Um, in a period of my life where I was really trying to express myself and uh, after Adam passed away and the emotions and the feelings and the love allowed me to create in ways I'd never done before. Pretty much on that basis of I don't give a damn what anybody thinks, I'm going to do something fun. Something my son would enjoy. So, the Zebu sisters, also known as the House of the Rising Sun, that'd be the um, the, the, the original name and you can guess which one that is by the way ah now we're into the quieter zone in a second this is uh, Dragon's Lair I got to get that kayak and canoe out over there but I let the water go down quite a bit this is my swimming pool and Rocky loves to chase things out in the swimming pool see if he'll let me have it put it down see he wants to go out there and play and I wanted to go out there and play too don't you want to watch I go. Okay, ready? Watch this. <coughs> I made that pool for him. Yeah. So, that's Kayak Bayous. If you haven't watched, there's a really good video, um, Song of Salvage, and it shows a drone. Hey, we got somebody visiting. Good, I'm glad y'all got a chance to visit us. Um, Dragons there, by the way, if you watched a long time ago, underneath the water over there is the other caves that I built for Trini and I to celebrate her birthday in. And, uh-oh, look at this. He says, Dad, we're in for the big stuff now. So, that's my boy. Um, you can see us over here kayaking around with a drone to the song my son created before he left. Oops, let him get away. Uh, can you see him? Yeah, a little spider tied to that web. So, it's a song about the bayous I created here to capture all the water that was going in the San Marcos River that needed to be cleaned up, remediated. Because there used to be a big industrial waste dump over in this section. So I created, a, and what I hope to dedicate, is a uh, nature preserve for the beaver that lives over there now and all the fish and the turtles and the otters and all the other critters if you haven't been around and this is one of the ponds this is actually a clean pond where you can swim in it and over there i got a hole in the rock i found and that's a rock with about 16 foot of water next to it and there's another rock over there and that's you can see the eyes almost that's um dragon's lair and that's a cave i created now all this is supposed to be able to have houses so imagine if you wanted to buy and wanted to know where to put it at one of those two houses I've got and you don't have a place to put it guess what I do and if you're a real good person and you have truth in your heart I'd love to have you for a neighbor sharing all this thing I want to put into a irrevocable trust so all this nature grapes grow on these by the way and below that is all the berries so the canoe path goes all the way around in between these islands and all up that grotto and there's paths on the side of it it's all part of this dream, you know, manifested. It's a story. 
and I'd like to have more people be involved in it and have a chance to put houses out here. So I'm just going to walk around this and show you some of the spots. So that's kind of a beach, and that whole hill could be taken down and leveled out. There's another canyon on the other side, and I could put houses on that side because there's a whole island over here. We have power and stuff over there. And so you see him, oh boy, he's coming. Look at that blue ball. That's actually a horse toy. But it's the only thing that we could get him that he wouldn't tear up. And so now, there's my boy. He's got himself a big toy. And he's really proud of it too. So, this right here, if you look down below, where that kayak is, I can literally take you and walk you all the way down there or even drive you down there in a four-wheeler. And that's a beach front. And you can see I had the water two foot higher at one point. But I'm going to keep it about this level so we have an island out there. And around the island is all eight to ten foot deep. And up the way, up the streams, there's actually fish. And there's some areas we can actually fish and eat the fish. And But most of us just put, throw it back. There are big ones over here, for example. Um, anyway, what's the point of all this? Well, some people might want to buy those houses and have an investment. And would you believe you get to write the investment off in 10 years as a depreciable portable building technically that's the definition and so on your taxes instead of having to pay taxes each year you'd write them off and you might have a little house sitting somewhere around here where all this is just part of your yard and back there you see with the vultures on top Ooh, that's the ship of salvage dreams and as all this water is flowing there's about five miles of shoreline now and it comes out of here turtles and stuff and it goes underneath here and comes out over here. And then it goes down and waterfalls all the way down there. And so the idea is that we can put those houses. Oh, good. Somebody visiting. Um, we can put those houses right out here on the far side of this. And that way help block more of that highway noise. And have you within 45 minutes of Austin. Within 45 minutes of San Antonio. And have a place that if something happened, you can come here. And have a beautiful retreat. Now, for example, this water, this is part of the canal. And that canal dumps into there, which goes down into the bayous. And this canal goes all the way back through the system. And the next stop is Walden Pond. Did you know I had Walden Pond in Texas? Well, excuse me. I didn't exactly have it. I created it. You got to do some of those things. As the saying goes, <clears throat> if you can't take Muhammad to the mountain... Bring the mountain to Muhammad. Well, sometimes, being a piece of Muhammad, you have to do that. So this is part of the forest. You get to walk through here and look at the vultures resting, waiting for something to go eat. And have a place where you can put a house. That's water right there. Cattail sticking up. A gorge over there that you could kayak down. And over here is the goats. That you can come help feed and take care of because they're our little friends. Yep, bat, bat. Look at that, they're really cute. And so, they're sitting here next to Walden Pond. Now, if you bought one of those houses and you put it out here, or one of the others we still have in Manifestation Bay, then we wouldn't have to haul it away. We don't want to, and we can have it here as part of a community. This is Walden Pond. And over here, that's the beaver's house. It's underneath that boat, Gilligan's Island. And that is the covered bridge over untroubled waters. And I thought it was not beautiful waters. Over there is a yacht, mostly decoration. That's the ark you can stay in if you stay here. Or the various little tiny houses that investors could own. And that way they have access. Okay, well, I'll, I'll put it down. And then you'll be able to eat. go ahead and come out here anytime you want. And stay here with your view. Take a walk. You don't necessarily have to own the land. What you have to do is have an interest in it. And we had um, airspace certificates. And you might even want a life estate. Might be able to arrange that. Where you get to live here the rest of your life. In fact, we've even thought about doing dementia villages. Which a dementia village means that... Stop. Stop, stop, stop. That you get to go ahead and... Uh, uh, um, we get to go kind of a little teeny bit crazy. Maybe a good bit crazy, but have a place that allows for a certain amount of dementia. And crazy. Now, where he's at, that's probably about four or five feet deep. 
maybe a little deeper out there, but it gets to be 16 feet deep over there. Some big fish swimming here. We put gar in here and a bunch of other stuff. Now, this is just part of where you, we could park those houses and have electric, have water, sewer, all the normal things. You're not, but you could also go off grid. And the idea is to be able to go on and do a DC current, solar power, wind power, water power, which is rare. I can do water power here too. So, I'd like to talk to everybody, but it's hard to talk and walk, and I'm not even chewing gum. That'd throw us off entirely, wouldn't it? This is a compost of wood. I'm trying to go ahead and dissolve down. We're going to try to maybe charcoal it or something. And what makes this a, 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 a waste area, um, in a sense that it has issues, is that it was used as a foundry. So in the ground, they would put, what you see here is cast iron, cast iron, and mix it with things to make stainless steel, which also makes a pretty cool little jewelry and stuff, but some of it, not so much. So certain portions of this, we're trying to clean it up, and it's called remediate. Ah, and that means go ahead and try to clean it and make things grow on it and give it a life without letting it all leach into the public water system and things like that. So I'm creating a, what I hope to be a trust where people can come and stay and you're not in any danger walking around or something like that. Just don't eat pieces of stainless steel and, and like anything else, don't eat lead-based paint if you see it. But in this case, it's a matter of being able to come out and stay in a beautiful environment and see what it's like to stay in that blue moon. That's the kid, which is only 60 some square feet. It's a beautiful little place. That one's uh, Vicky 2. Way over there on the other side of the woods is Vicky 1. These are examples where the investor, if they want to sell them now, and actually a couple of them do, um, another person can come in and buy one and start depreciating it from whatever purchase price they put into it. And these are actually fairly cheap compared to the, um, the new ones. It's about, oh my goodness, the grasshoppers are horrible over here. That's our tomato plants. Need a new plan. We're going to put a garden in over here too between the houses. So, um, somebody who owned the kid, they might make an income of it, maybe 5%, which beats the heck out of a bank on an appreciating asset, and be able to come out here and use it, spend time out here, and um, relax. People need to relax more. I hear that all the time, including about me. Little fires and be able to go ahead and, and stay out here with the family. And you don't it, the structures, you'd have an interest in the property and helping take care of it. When you come out, you could actually be involved in the gardening and everything else. If you want to live out here, you wouldn't be. It's a community. Everybody participates if they're going to live here. And there's really nobody living here to speak of full time, except a few, Trinity and I particularly. Why? Because we like to get younger. Oh, look at Hey. Ah, did you see him growing? He was, he was out here eating. He's digging these, he digs these little holes. That's one of our armadillos. You guys got armadillos up there in Michigan? No, I know better. But he's been all over here, digging for nuts and berries. Oh my god! Oh, but they also eat ticks. Like the possums and stuff, they're really good at eliminating all these bugs and these things like that. This is another one of the houses. And this is some of our trees, which we need to take better care of. That one looks like it's toast. We had a really bad freeze this year and we lost a few things. This is where, called Ginger Swan. Whoops, there you go. And now we're on the other side in a different pond. The water goes under there. So we could actually have a house all the way up here. So your view would be sunset off this direction and sunrise over there. I put houses in this hole before. So let's just say you said, oh man, I really want to have the arched zebu or the arched zebu, which is also known as the house of rising sun. And you wanted to have a place to put it, but didn't know where. A place you might be able to make some income off of it when you couldn't use it, like here. One spot over there, one spot over here. I actually had a house over here. If you saw the pictures of heaven, in its first incarnation, we ended up moving over here thinking it was going to stay. 
And then it got sold again. Couldn't resist for twice the price. And then it left. But this hole was left for a house to go in with a view of a pasture and sunrise. So sunrise is right there. So this is one of the spaces that you could have to put a tiny house. You know how hard it is to find a place to put a real tiny house, not just a mobile home or an RV? Yeah, I could fit an RV in a mobile home in here, but I don't want to. I want to have houses with a view and privacy and birds in the trees next door and fishing over here and turtles. Oh, and Rocky's jumping in the water. <laughs> He's throwing his own ball in. Now another spot. Look at this alcove in the middle. So my point is, is we could have spaces. I could actually get a house in there, a tiny one, using a crane. But there's another spot over here I've thought very much about. I even cleared it out. And if you can imagine having a tiny house in the middle of these trees with a pasture. Now in this case, sunrise actually comes up over here. You'd miss that. Sunset comes up over there. But talk about a nice cool space. Quiet. So you hear him chewing on his toy. And in here, that's about nine or 10 feet deep. And that system goes all the way back and around. Now mind you, there's probably a fox living around the corner over here. And I know I've got otter living in here. And so you're really kind of out there in the real nature. You want to keep a real nice environment with a lot of creatures, but you'll be safe in your house. In fact, if you like nature, you'll be having like a ball. Birds all the time, you can hear them. Frogs at night. So we could fit the pair of houses here even. And for people that want to have a retreat where there's no paparazzi, oh, oops, there are a few prickers. Now, mind you, here's some ants. And these are not fire ants. These are wood ants. And so this is a preservation right here. We keep this going. This is, no matter what. Now, how many of you seen these wood ants? They don't really want to bite. They're not out to bite me. And you don't want them to. They have a, a gut stinger. They'll die if they bite you. But you can see they're going back and forth and bringing food back. And they actually aren't like fire ants. They're actually nice ants. And so you don't want to kill them. You want to preserve them. That's what the, the, the horny toads eat. So it's really important um, to keep those few that are around, those anthills. Now over here we have Egyptian papyrus floating around. And I'll pull that out a little later. That's, if you went to buy that in store, that's worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And this is the new growth after the freeze. And then same with a bunch of this lily. I bought that start off as a $15 container you could fit in my hand. And now we're going to harvest some of this. People can use it. This over here has fish, tons of fish in it. And it's all part of a system. This goes back, wraps around, and there's altogether five miles of shoreline. Now, if you had a house, it could be sitting over here. It could be sitting over there. It could be sitting over there. It could be sitting over where that ship is sitting. There's a few more spaces. Now, these aren't just meant for anybody to just move in and have them be served by servants. You can come, you can go and stay on that basis. It's a bed and breakfast. I guess you feel like you're being served by servants, although we don't feel like servants. We feel like hosts. Um, having waited tables when I was young, I understand what servants are. But to the other end of it, if you did come out here and you ever needed to, we have the highway out in the front. But we also have a retreat. This is a bridge. That is what beavers do. Have you ever seen beavers? Have you seen beavers? I've never seen a live beaver. But we have wild beaver. He actually seems like he's domesticated. And he keeps plugging this thing, and I keep digging it all out, and he keeps raising it up. He likes it about six inches, maybe eight inches higher. And then he stops building. But I think it's because he's got a cave. His house is up underneath. And every time I lower it, he wants it back up again. This is another portion that comes out of here. That's by about 15 feet deep. You see fish and turtles, all sorts of critters in here. And then that goes under the <laughs> covered bridge over untroubled waters. Lots of big fish out here. We've never really fished it and taken anything out. Um, so besides turtles and stuff. And so all this back here is part of your, what would be a perpetual. All this is in, in what I'm going to try to do is make this a irrevocable trust. 
it can't really ever be developed and lived on by by a normal village. So this would be a village of of all the natural things you can do. Oh, oh, oh here's, huh? I wonder why he was up in the tree. It looked like a a predator. I hope he doesn't have one of my critters over here. Oh, look at. Those are already big. Those are plums. Those are um, volunteers. Now, oh, uh oh, that's the second one that went up. Uh oh. Rocky! He's going for one. That's two from the same spot. That implies that maybe where my cat went. I just lost a cat I had for 10 years. Uh oh, I smell carrion now. I smell it. Oh, shite. Okay, my favorite cat just from 10 years out here at my house disappeared three days ago. Up oh, there's a fourth. Uh oh. I guess I'll let him land and figure out where it's at. Wow, that's five. You can see him cruising. Oh, well, I can smell it now, too. Uh, well. <coughs> That's why I said it's, um... It's an environment. Sometimes the things you treasure will be sacrificed. You can't kill all the predators. This is where I live. This is where the cats live with me, but um, this is not a good thing. Hmm. Anyway, if you guys want to think about this, I'm going to go ahead and get off now. I know a lot of people, oh, look at this. Uh, there's two of them. I'm gonna go hide so I can go see where my cat might be hidden, where they're eating it up at. Oh man. Um, hmm. If that smell is what I think it is, that's probably Tang. Tang is an orange male cat. Been with me a long time. Actually, ever since I moved out into that house 10 years ago. Anyway, guys, all of this is available as part of what's going to be dedicated as a um, a sanctuary. And it's a sanctuary where I hope to be able to honor all of the things that we could salvage in life, as well as our lives, our bodies. And if you know my story, you understand it's 68. And I promise you, I never expected to get this far. I never expected to do this stuff. I never expected to be in this condition. Nobody told me when I was a kid that you could get in good condition. You can. And you can have fun. See that? That took me 11 days. 11 days, actually evenings. I didn't do it during the day much. And uh, it was with no nails, all screws. So I could tell everybody I was totally screwed when I was making that. That's been about five years, four years, maybe four years. And um, it represented my new mascot, the Ship of Salvage Dreams. And that was intended, this is part of an area that I lost trying to represent myself in a legal battle. From there over, that's been taken over by somebody who's, who's bulldozing it all now. That's Vulture up there now. See him? Now the Vulture goes in after the other carrion birds have already killed it and eaten what they want. He'll go in there and finish it off. But the other ones we looked at, those weren't just regular Vultures. One of them probably picked up one of my chickens. They're, they're hunting my area now. I didn't realize there else is my cat. Anyway, for the moment, that right there was part of the stuff I had built over there. If you haven't seen it, pawn ship and stuff. But from this side going that direction, we can put houses. 
tiny houses, not big old 4,000 square foot subdivisions with driveways and two-car garages and all that stuff. This is not designed to be that. This is designed to be a sanctuary where we can go ahead and demonstrate with our money as elders, with our time, with our efforts. This is a part of the water system and it goes around by my house normally in a canal and comes through here and goes under here and goes through here and flows because flowing water is the secret. You can't have stagnant water. So the water's flowing the whole time and there's life on the edge of it. And the life is not just the, the living creatures like that one, but also the, um, the grass and stuff. Did you know grass like this takes energy from the sun during the day? And you might be getting 1,500, 2,000 watts in a heartbeat through all those blades of grass doing photosynthesis and creating chlorophyll and doing their job. So this is the way to my house and it appears that my sign got knocked over or my this is brought in from India I have some stuff from India I got more these are the doors the backs of them and this is supposed to be uh, um, that represents um I brought this in from India quite a while back and so the idea of course is this is a Japanese garden as it goes back eventually, one day. And since it goes back to my house, and as you can see, that becomes a compass for the whole property. And you can find your way around that way. So, if you decide you wanted to go ahead and get, and this is my dream of dreams, somebody decides to invest in those incredible houses that are built out of trees that were some of them a thousand, two thousand years old. And you can count the growth lines in them. It's amazing. And all the beautiful parts of it. You can bring it over here and we can set it up again. Now I want to do it myself. And if you want to just buy a bunch of blue tile, I have a million dollars worth of it and get some of that. Then I'll just spend the money to buy those and bring them here myself. But that's what the goal is. To keep building on this nature preserve. And to keep putting tiny houses as examples so people can come and stay in them. And find out that you can build with pure salvage, with no imports. Jeez, if possible, actually with the taxes you would normally pay, writing off and paying for it, if you use it for better breakfast. And incidentally, if you use these for better breakfast, there's no 15% better breakfast tax because they're portable buildings. Yeah. And on top of that, you get to write them off in 10 years and give them to your children, hmm, if you have any, as a home. Yeah. And they'd be able to live in them and come visit and eat with you in the kitchen house and talk and have your family all be together in little houses. That's supposed to have a shower and a bathroom in the corner there. And that way you can all live together without chewing each other up. Because we seem to have some differences in opinion about work ethic. Oh, the color of your hair, how many rings to put in your nose and ears and other orifices. And we've got some disagreements about a few things that maybe <clears throat> shouldn't all be shoved into the same house at the same time. So, to that end, I want to create a community where we can have elders, even a dementia section. And then have younger kids helping take care of them. And the younger kids helping raise adopted children that need to be homeschooled. And perhaps taught some old-fashioned values is the culture of our country is diluted and I consider our culture to be Christian based but there's a moral ethos not kill everybody that doesn't believe the way we do but you know try to find a way for everybody to get along this is important so this is a dog walk we created for um, an old dog, fat dog, to get up and down. I need a good mechanic over here. Get my dump truck running again. Anybody know some good mechanics? Want to trade some mechanic time for some materials to build your house with? Or if you're an old retired mechanic, that kind of fixes good old stuff, I may have a place for you to live. If you're a good person, not an old druggie, an alcoholic, uh, no, no, no. I want some really good people who need a place to go ahead and enjoy being an elder and doing the things they love. Give them a house and a space to live in. Build more. Well, I'm going to get going. I don't know how many people even on. There looks like only one left. 
I talk too much, they tell me. Attention span won't last. I don't care. I don't want to get on you once in a while. And so if somebody wants to, they can hit the pause button. Come back later. Take another bite. But in the meantime, if you've been looking at the posts I've been making, and you go online right now and be getting, get a Substack subscription, and find out more, because this may not be the only thing I offer up that other people want, but at the rate I'm going, Facebook maybe just block me out from everybody soon. Yeah, you know how that works. So, this is going to end up on YouTube if I can get it downloaded, okay? Oh, there's possibility for houses back here. That's a space. And here's another space. These are all places where I could put houses instead of RVs. Now, why would I want to put a beautiful tiny house here? Imagine this. All over the country, people are parking RVs. Now, I don't mean to say bad things about RVs, but... I will say this, after about 15 years, RVs are not the sort of thing I want to build a community around. I don't want to deal with all the mold, all the mildew, and everybody abandoning vehicles on my property because they finally reached the end of their life. Know what I mean? I don't think you do either. So, I'm going to end this with, I'd like to see some beautiful houses come here. I'd like to see some people come here. There'd be good people to live in them. And all of it will lead to everybody having a wonderful time. This is a view of that other island, and there's actually more spaces over there. Are you interested? Do you know somebody might be? Please. Let's get them together. In the meantime, if you want the houses for your space, you want to move them out there, that's possible. But you need to be online learn about the, the, the logistics, and then let me know. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Guess I need to get back to doing some hmm, work. Have a good one. Bye.